So in this lecture, I would like to show you um, um, a MATLAB code for the flat routing model we derived uh, we derived in the last lecture theoretically. So just a short uh, repetition of the model. So what we have is we have some compartments, compartments here shown uh, for a river or a typical river with something like an exponential profile. So we have a first compartment here for the river, the second compartment here, the third compartment here, and so on. So at the boundaries of the compartments, we have to define the bed elevation, and uh, then we will calculate the water height in every compartment using such a differential equation. So the change of water height is um, the balance of what is coming in and what's going out. So when we have a compartment I, then uh, this is the incoming flux and this is the, outcoming, the outgoing flux, and we have to divide um, to, get the, 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 to get the free surface elevation here, we have to divide it by the cross-section of the compartment, meaning the width of the compartment B and the length of the compartment delta X. So this delta X can also change from compartment to a compartment, then it gets in delta XI, and when the width of a compartment changes from compartment to compartment, then it gets a BI here. So and then we have to, to, to calculate or calculate the Discharges here. Discharge is velocity times cross section times water height uh, uh, here. And because of stability reasons, we have the, to calculate uh, the discharge at the boundary I of the compartment, or take and uh, the, we have to take the 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 cross section at the at the beginning of the compartment or at the inflow cross section of the compartment. So this explains the i and the i minus one here. So and now I would like to build up a code. So this code normally starts. This code normally starts uh, that we define a bottom coordinate. So if we, if we first say how many compartments do we have, and this variable I call an element, a number of elements. So an element is the number of compartments. I also had, could have called it number of compartments or what, what I, whatever, but I called it an element. So this is the number of compartments. We have five compartments, one, two, three, four, five less compartments than in this figure, but we can change this very easy. So then we have to define something like a button. So I uh, decided in this easiest version uh, of the code for an equidist equidistant model. So I say we have a stretch of 30 ki 40 kilometer, which we want to simulate, and we want to divide the 40 kilometer of length of river in five elements. So the dx is 40 kilometer di divided by five elements which would be eight kilometer per element. So, and then I have to define the x at the boundaries of the compartment. Here is the button coordinate and the x here. And as I said, we have one more x than we have compartments. Because in this figure, we have one, two, three, four, five, six compartments, and we have seven boundaries, of course. So uh, this loop has to run from i is equal to 1 to n element plus 1. So, and we just say that x from i is i minus 1, so it starts from 0 times dx. And now we have to uh, define a button. As, as I said, I take something like uh, uh, an exponential button profile, and this button profile I have chosen looks like this. So we have a very steep area in the mountain in the mountainous area of the river, river and then it, um, when it reaches something like the ocean or whatever, it gets flatter and flatter and flatter. So this is the idea, this are the first lines of the code. Yes, so then we have to define some some uh, uh, constants like gravitational ac uh, acceleration and the lambda. The lambda is a friction factor according to Darcy. Uh, 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 yes, according to Darcy Weisbach, and we have to define something like an inflow in the first compartment. So, what is the inflow coming from? Oops, what is the inflow coming? 
coming from the source here. And I said, in this case, so we want to have something like 100 cubic meter uh, coming from the source. Of course, there's also water coming from the, from, from, from the soil everywhere around the river. But now we only want to take into account a source at the beginning of the river. Later, we will also introduce groundwater elements. So then we have to say for every element how large is the compartment or how the width of the compartment this is B uh, the width of the compartment. So the river has a width of 10 meters everywhere, but we also can uh, change the width here with the river or whatever. Yes, and this is what we don't need. What we need in the next lecture when we also have a catchment area uh, belonging to the, we don't need it now. So, um, and then we have to define the initial water depths in the river, the initial water depths for the initial water depths. Um, we first calculate the slope, J, the slope is the bottom at one at one uh, edge of the compartment minus the bottom at the ne next X, X edge of the compartment uh, divided by the difference between the two, comp uh, by, by the length of the compartment. So this is the slope of the compartment and then we calculate um, the uh, the free surface elevation or the water depths in the river, this R means river, um, uh, according to the, to the Darcy-Weisbach law, which is written here. This is the Darcy-Weisbach law. Um, the larger the slope is, the smaller is the water depth, what you see here. Um, yes, and uh, we assume this is only a b initial water depth. We will change it during the simulation, but for the initial water depth, we just say that we take everywhere the discharge at the first node, and then we can calculate an initial water depth. Yeah, then we come to the equation solver. To the equation solver, we take a maximum time step of one, a maximum type, time step to solve the equation of one hour, 3,600 seconds. And this is the, the, the call of the equation solver. It is the ODE, ordinary differential equation, which, uh, which solves all this kind of equations for all the compartments. Uh, this is called o ODE 23T. It's a stiff solver. We unfortunately need a stiff solver. So, and the equations are described in the function mass balance. The total simulation times will be in this case written here. It starts from zero times zero to 250 hours. So 250 times 3,600 seconds, which means a total simulation time of 250 hours. So, uh, and then I plot just the T, so the time against the free surface or the, the water depth at every, at every, uh, uh, at every compartment, just at every compartment. This is all. So I just see we have to make this a little bit bigger because this is two lines. Yes, now it's two lines, now it's correct, so it's just one line here. Okay, and then I introduce an X label and a Y label and a grid to see where we are. <coughs> this is just solving the equations, and now we have to define the mass balance equations. So first of all, I define an interpolant to get the mass balance from the, from the time step before the actual time step, I just make an interpolator. So this is an interpolator, uh, and this is used to get the, to, to get uh, the water depth at, fun at points where I do not know it. It's just an interpolation from the last time step. So then I, call, then I calculate the free surface. The free surface is a button plus a water height, is a, is a coordinate of the free surface. And at the last element, the free surface because there is no water height. The last element, the free surface, is the button at the last edge of our simulation area plus the free plus the water height in the in the compartment before this last edge. So this we have to take into account. It's much sometimes a little bit complicated to look at this n element plus one. Sometimes it's n element plus one. Sometimes it's only n element and so on. So here you have to be very careful. Then for every time step, of, uh, I, I calculate the, uh, uh, the slope of the free surface. 
not the slope of the button. Now I need the slope of the free surface because only when the free surface has a slope, then there is a flow. When the free surface is horizontal, then there is no flow. Even if the button has something like a slope, but the free surface does not have a slope, uh, then there is no. So we have to calculate the slope of the free surface, uh, which we did not do in the initial conditions. But this was just initial conditions. Here we have to take, uh, uh, get the slope of the free surface, which is in done in that, that way. And for the last element, we again have to look uh, uh, that it works, yes, and for the first element. So then we cal calculate the hydraulic diameter, the hydraulic diameter, the hydraulic diameter for a rectangular river cross section. So this is an assumption. We assume that we have a, a rectangular river cross section. Then the hydraulic diameter is um, four times the cross section width times water height divided by the wetted area. The, no, no, the uh, the, the wetted circumstance, the wetted circumstance is the width at the bottom plus two times the water height at this edge and at this edge. So, and then we calculate the velocity, as the velocity in the same way as we did it in the initial conditions, and then the discharge is velocity times uh, width and water height here. Yes, then we need again uh, the discharge at the last point, the discharge at the last point, and this I calculate using interpolation because at the last point we cannot do any numerics. We have to guess what is the outcoming, what is the outgoing discharge, and I just calculate it by interpolation. This was the reason that I introduced at the beginning some interpolators here. Um, no, here I, 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 I formulate the interpolator and then I use it. So. Um, I don't use it. I see. I think it's not really important to take this this line into account. But you have to check it for yourself. Okay. And then I uh, then I uh, uh, calculate the mass balance, saying that the mass that the change of water depth in one element is incoming. Nee, uh, yes, incoming flux minus outgoing flux divided by the width and the length of the compartment. That's all. We just we have closed the system and now we can run it. I would like to run it for a given data set. This is wrong. This is right here. And I just put it away. And now let's start the stimulation. Yes. Oops. What you see here is not very is not very interesting. It's just uh, you see just as a, is, that the free surface goes up because here it's coming 10 cubic meter per second, going down this river and filling up this river with water, filling up this river with more or less water. And you here you see the bottom coordinate in black. You see the free surface coordinate in blue. And here you see the total depth. So the total depth is increasing, increasing within the rivers as you, as you always see it in natural rivers, as you always see in natural rivers. So, and um, I have a second plot, I have a second plot of all the water heads in the, heads in the different compartments. I think I took 20 compartments, I do not know. I think I took 20 compartments. You see that with the time, with the time, uh, uh, and here is something like 90, uh, 90,000 seconds. Um, with the time, the free surface goes up, as we just see, saw it in the simulation. And at the end, it reaches something like uh, um, an asymptotic water height, which will be uh, hold during the whole simulation. So as I said, at the end, we get only this kind of free surface. So, but this kind of river or this kind of hydraulic model is not really correct because we don't have rainfall in our simulation. We don't have groundwater in our simulation. And in the next um, video, I will show you how to introduce rainfall in such a numerical model.